Hi everybody, thanks so much for joining me. Susan Timchak here, also known as Stampin' Sue Creates. I wanted to do a, uh, this is kind of a quick video. Um, it is a design by Little B, and um, I don't have one finished yet, but I just stitched one out. And here's what it looks like. Okay, and it's one of those holders for hand sanitizers. So it's really cute. It's a little bat. <clears throat> and I'm making these for my grandsons because they're back to school. Actually, back to mask wearing. And there's already been some positive cases in the school. And I thought if I made these little hand sanitizer holders for like their backpacks, and if they're super cute like this, this might be a reason why they're going to want to make sure they use them, right? And of course, all the kids are going to think, hopefully, that they're cute. So um, it's a seven minute stitch and only 3,620 stitches. And I believe um, they have, uh, Little B has tons of different types of uh, hand sanitizer holders along, as, uh, along with a lot of other things too. Um, but I, I wanna say that it was maybe $3, which you know isn't bad. And if you're lucky enough that you have a five by seven hoop and maybe that's the biggest hoop you have, you'll be able to make this in there. So um, very simple. And I'll talk about my machine while it's stitching. I probably won't have enough time to talk about all of it, but um, reasoning why I haven't done many videos lately. So anyhow, I have my five by seven hoop here and I have a tearaway stabilizer in here. And I'm gonna go ahead and put that in the machine. And you can see the stitches here, um, a couple different colors, but I'm actually only using um, kind of like a grayish white. I'm using a black and a pink and um let's go ahead and get this puppy started so i wanted to go ahead and do this video for you um sorry about the way that it looks um the sun is shining and uh we'll talk about that in a little bit so first thing we want to do we're going to put the foot down and we're going to do a uh stitch to show you where you're going to lay out your um which i'm using today is a black vinyl um, I got it through Amazon, you know, and many of you know, I get a lot of my things through Amazon. And uh, it's a kind of like a blackboard type fabric. And on Amazon, I don't have the wrapper because this is actually the second time I'm doing it. Well, probably the third time I'm doing it. Um, I threw the wrapper away. I was so frustrated. I was having issues with Bob here. And yeah, well, we'll get into that. But um, so it's a, it, it was listed on um, Amazon as a, um, black fabric but it's not it's vinyl but it's it's thin and you don't want anything too thick when you're doing this this type of design so there we go um, my cat is up here she's like what's going on the Sun is shining I want to sit in the window so it is um, not really sure there you go you can see it is a vinyl and it is thin and we're going to be doing a couple layers of this so what I'm gonna do now, I have my um, design area. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my vinyl down. Now you can choose to tape it down if you'd like. I find it works fine for me like this. You can also use a spray adhesive. Make sure it's one that's safe for embroidery machines. We all know that, right? Let me flip this around a little bit. Um, and then I'm gonna get into my story. Um, Probably not going to have enough time to do my whole story. You know how I can go on and on sometimes. All right, so I'm going to put that there. Now I'm going to leave this same color in because it's going to do uh, some of the fine details. Okay, so what's my story lately? Well, I've been busy with my Stampin' Up! business. Um, I did an online leadership event last weekend. Um, I've just kind of been focusing a lot on my Stampin' Up! business. It's coming to the end of our calendar year with Stampin' Up, which ends the end of uh, this month. It's September already. Can you believe that? I almost wanted to say August. So today is September 2nd, 2021, depending on when you're watching this, because who knows? I mean, I could be gone and buried and, you know, y'all are putting, pulling up my videos, which, you know, thank you. So I've been busy with my Stampin' Up! business, trying to get my quota in that I need in order to maintain my gold title. So um, I have a lot 
a lot of that stuff going on and if you follow me here then then you'll all know that I do Stampin Up um, been a demonstrator with Stampin Up for 21 years so anyhow um, I haven't really been doing much embroidery videos whatever the last thing was I did you all saw and uh, so I sat down and wanted to make this bat I thought this would be super cute I'm also gonna make them little towels too so if I get to do that this weekend before I go down to my daughter's on Sunday, I'll definitely do a video on it. Because, of course, you don't have to make two of everything, right? There's two of them. So I sat down to do this this um, video. the other. Well, actually, I started doing one before this. It was a, a ghost one. And I'm going to redo that one, too. Um, I had issues. Bob was having issues. He was leaving big loops. Um, big loops on the front. Big loops on the back and uh jamming up and bird nests and all sorts of things so when i was doing the one video i noticed when the needle was going up and down i was like either having a moment where i was seeing something or something was going on and sure enough it was apparently a piece of thread or something had gotten caught inside um, up to the top where you thread it through and um it, it was coming out as it was stitching so and i guess you know there was a couple things that were going on with that so one thing of one word of advice I have to you um, if you're having trouble underneath your frame with your bobbin most likely it's a problem up on top of your machine okay so keep that in mind if it's a bobbin underneath here a bobbin issue it's the top now I'm not sure if that goes through with if there's issues on the top it's the bottom I mean I don't I don't know about that. I can't quote that. But um, I ended up taking out the bobbin case. It was loaded with, well, not loaded. I mean, I've seen worse. Um, lots of lint and lots of, lots of buildup. I saw some uh, threads under there and things. Took the whole bottom part apart underneath, not the machine, just underneath this whole bobbin area. There's two little screws that come out. I took that plate out. And I'll tell you, I'm like fumbled fingers here because my hands don't like to work like they used to not that they really worked good before but it's difficult with those little um pieces of the little screws and things okay so we did that part and that cute so you're kind of seeing this is his belly these are his ears next thing we're going to do is his nose so we're going to use well i'm going to use pink i'd love to see what you did if you um if you get this design or any other design if you want to share with me come on over to my facebook page at uh, Sweet, S-U-E, B Embroidery. I'll put a link. Well, I'll put the name of it down below. I don't know how that whole link thing works, but um, I'd love to hear from you. Um, I've had some people send me messages and show me things that they made, and I really, I love seeing it. Would love to see it. So anyhow, um, let's do the nose. And very quick, the nose is. So I cleaned it all out, put it back together, and started stitching and well I'll, I'll show you when I'm done with this I'll show you exactly what was going on and uh, it still wasn't wasn't working the way it should so okay we're done with that now we're gonna change and we're gonna go with black thread which is going to do the details with the eye and the nose um, so what was I saying oh I'll show you I'll show you what it all was looking like when when I'm done here so um, I took it back apart the next night and really went in and, you know, checked where the cutter is underneath and all that. And I did find another thread or two and I thought, well, I'm going to give it another shot. I'm going to see if um, what I cleaned out the second time did the job and knock on wood and I don't even think this table's wood I don't know what it is but knock on wood here's the piece of wood faux wood whatever you know it seems to be working okay so um, definitely you know my first thought was oh boy check the stitch count well good old Bob here is almost up to three million stitches and he probably should go in for a tune-up um, but I just can't imagine not having him here in my life. You know what I mean? Like it, I might not use him for a week at a time, but you know, it's kind of like as soon as somebody says you can't have a piece of chocolate, you know, all you want is that chocolate. So the thought of having to, um, to drop him off for, you know, a service, which 
you know, I should be a good mommy and I should do that, right? Who can relate? Raise your hand. Um, I should do that, but uh, it, it's working now. So, it, but it's going to come. I'm, I'm going to definitely take it in to be serviced before the winter comes in because um, I use Pocono Sew and Vac, which is where I purchase my machines from. And uh, they are in the Poconos and I really don't want to be traveling there in the winter time. So, okay, so that's that. What is next? Um, next, we're going to go with white, which is that, that off-white color I've been using. And I do see a little thread in there and I do want to get in here and snip that. So anyhow, um, I did, I, you know, knock on wood, um, you, you do want to learn your machine. Um, so when all that happened, I put a whole new bobbin in. I um, changed my needle, excuse my reach here, changed my needle, re-thread everything, made sure everything was, you know, thread the proper way, the needle was good, everything was good. So first thing you always want to do when you're having an issue is try to rule out the simple things. You know, um, maybe you need a new needle, maybe the thread got botched up, maybe, you know, um, you need to change your bobbin, um, all those simple things. And of course, you know, try to get on a regular basis with taking that bobbin out and cleaning out underneath there because you'd be surprised. You know, wait, I'm seeing something here that I'm not liking. Something isn't right. Hold on a second. I'm going to cut that thread. See that thread, how that is? Um, what the heck is going on here? I don't know what that that piece of thread is okay what I'm gonna do though I'm going to um, put this down and I'm gonna go into the stitches because I want to kind of go back maybe 10 see maybe I spoke too soon huh okay this is the one that I want to get rid of Hold on a sec. I'm going to get rid of this long thread. All right, come on, Sue. You ever talk to yourself like that? Sometimes it helps. Okay. Let's see how we're doing. We're doing the little fangs. good now doing the eyeballs the little whites of the eyes so um anyhow you know if you have a problem with your machine always listen you know don't ever walk away from it because as soon as you walk away that's when you're going to have a problem um by using your machine you'll get to know what sounds are quote normal and what sounds are not normal if you're going to have to walk away for whatever reason you know pause your machine you know hit that button and pause it and, um, you know, definitely, you know, I would, um, that's what I would suggest. Okay, so we got our eyes in this. Now it's gonna do the little circle on the top where you're going to, um, this is gonna be a um, cam snap one. There's also one that you can download that does the eyelet, okay? And there are full instructions. When you purchase any of Little B's designs, there are full instructions to show you how to put it together, okay. So we're all done now with all of our detail, our fine detail work. Let me see if I can get this in here. Oh, it's kind of at an odd angle, but I think you could see it down here in the, I'm hoping you can, but I'm not gonna complain about the sun. So what you want to do now is you're gonna turn it over and you're going to get another piece of the vinyl and this piece is going to cover your back. Okay, so make sure that it's going to cover the whole back and then I like to use um, two pieces of tape now everybody uses something different I like to use the white medical tape I find that it holds well um, it comes off really easily and um, it sticks nicely multiple times you can use it so what it's going to do now is going to be the outline stitch to put the front to the back 
So anyhow, um, yeah, definitely rule out the obvious. Don't walk away. Turn it off. Listen to your machine. If something doesn't sound right, then stop it because chances are, you know, you'll you'll know. I mean, a lot of people say, well, how do you know? Trust me, you'll know. Almost three million stitches later, and I ought to know what um, Bob should sound like and not sound like. <coughs> So anyhow, um, hurricane, next topic, hurricane. So God bless everyone down south, Louisiana, everyone affected by um, the recent hurricane. We got hit with it yesterday here in northeastern Pennsylvania, and I'll tell you what, I never saw so much rain. Um, I live near a river, a uh, major Susquehanna River. I always worry about it, always worry about it. And I have to tell you, our, our river situation, again, knock on wood, has been good. But down in South Wilkes-Barre, Ashley area, um, Hanover Township area, they have creeks, small creeks running through. And boy, those people, God bless them. There was major, major problems yesterday. I did have some water in my basement, nearly nothing of what some people were dealing with. And oh my gosh, the devastation, unreal. Okay, so here is our little bat. You really can't, I apologize for that sun coming in there. Look at that. Let me see if I can put this blind down. I didn't realize it was that bad. Let me see, I just have this little, oh gosh, I should have done that before. I apologize. I think you could see that a little bit better now. There's still a little bit of a glare right there. I'm sorry. Okay. So wait, oh, the next step is going to do two little tick marks. You can just leave this white color in. You are not going to see these at all. These are not going to be seen. These are just going to be placement stitches where you're going to put the back little pocket on. Okay. I think my watch died. Let me see what time it is. Okay. Because I have my Facebook Live I'm doing tonight over on my, oh, pardon me, my Stampin' Sue Creates uh, Facebook page for my stamping friends. This isn't a very good video, is it? But you're kind of getting a, a look as to how this is all, how this all gets put together. I think that's a little better. Okay, so we have all of this done, right? There's the front. Let me lay this out for you. Here's the back, the little tick marks. Now you see these little pieces of thread? Only because those kind of things bother me and you're not going to see them but I know they're there I'm just going to trim them now while I can let me pull this a little closer to me so I don't end up knocking you all over I'm just trimming some of these little pieces of thread okay all right so now here's our back so now we're going to take a smaller piece of vinyl and these two marks that are here that we stitched. And it looks like one is higher than the other, doesn't it? Like it's at an angle. Well, I'm gonna go up with the higher one. Okay, I'm gonna pull my tape off the sides because I'm gonna reuse that tape. And you're going to take your other kind of half piece of vinyl and you're going to, this is what's going to make the pocket. Now, if you do the one that's the eyelet, you don't have to worry about all this. Even if you're doing this one, um, you really don't have to put any vinyl down here. You only really have to do it more than halfway because you're not even going to see this bottom part. But anyhow, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this and I'm going to put it where I'm covering those stitch marks and kind of put it straight. And I'm going to take my tape. I'm going to put my tape. Ooh, uh oh, uh-oh pushed it right out of my hoop. Don't press that hard. <laughs> and I'm gonna put my tape on either side. Don't press so hard, Sue. Just don't know your own strength sometimes. All right, and when I flip it over then, I'm going to stick it back underneath here. Sorry about that, but you guys are really up close here. Now, I wanna make sure it didn't flip over or anything. That would be tragic. Okay, let me just take a peek. OK, 
okay everything looks good so now we're going to stitch that part of the bottom on so yeah we did i did get some water in my basement but it was manageable i'm not going to complain about it i was i just kept going down there every so often and um just kind of pushed it. i have a drain in my basement just kind of kept pushing the water down the uh, drain and uh, got the humidifier going and would you believe by this morning that humidifier was, had had already been full by 5 30 this morning and uh, emptied the, the dehumidifier and let it go and now came home from work and there's just a few little spots but um, it definitely it was the ground was so saturated it was literally coming through uh, my basement wall and i have an old house so you know if it was a new house in the basement you know the walls were you know much nicer it wouldn't have that problem but it's an old house old foundation and uh, I don't know I'm, I'm thinking maybe maybe somebody knows that's here uh, you could probably get something maybe to put along the paint maybe tar or something like that something on the inside of the walls in the basement maybe to protect oh we're done to protect the water from coming in in the future I mean I don't know um, okay we're good I'm gonna move on over here and I'm gonna bring you on over with me so close your eyes if you get seasick or motion sick I would say and sorry that's my iPad I'm getting ready for the uh, the live tonight all right let me put my light on here let me get another light over here let me pull that light over okay so here we go here's our bat I got two of them one for each of the little guys and I got enough I'm gonna make maybe another one so I'm gonna trim off all these little tails now when I was watching a uh, video I saw what she did when um, she was going to put these back on because you see how you get kind of like a little nesting here she let it do one stitch and pull up and then she pulled the bobbin thread to the front and then you won't get those little um, areas like that let me see how this one is that one looks good okay so I'm gonna I don't know if I can get any more use out of this tape yeah, it still has some sticky. I'm going to stick it here on my placemat underneath my machine. Okay. And we can take it out of the hoop now. All right, let me put my hoop over here. Okay, so now what am I going to do? This I use tearaway. You can use tearaway, you can use cutaway, whatever you feel comfortable using. Um, I like the tear away because you can just tear it away, right? And now what we're going to do is we're going to make sure you have a nice sharp pair of scissors and we're going to trim out all around this. So I was using these scissors. It's kind of fine, delicate. Wait, this little charm is stuck down here. So I think I'm going to start here. And um, I'm just going to trim around. Just leave a little bit of a border. It's up to you how much you want to do. Just trim around that. And again, you know, this isn't that hard to do. Just take your time. And like whenever I cut with for paper crafting, I like to keep the scissors straight and I like to move the material, whether it be um, you know, uh, the paper or in this case, vinyl. So this is the most intricate part is down here. So I'm gonna cut a piece and kind of curve it and get my scissors and curve it. I'm gonna cut that off. So that's not too bad. And then we're gonna come up here and we're gonna go all the way around it. It helps if you kind of stick your tongue out a little bit. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Maybe it does, I don't know. Hey, do what works for you. Sometimes I have to not talk, believe it or not. And trim this. So 
so I can kind of focus a little bit as to what I'm doing. So my suggestion would be to, you know, um, have one that you've already done. And as the other one is stitching, you know, maybe go ahead and trim it out or, you know, just stitch out, you know, how many you want to make. And if you're sitting in front of the TV or something, you know, take them there and, you know, while, you know, you're watching TV, which you're not going to be really watching, but you'll be listening, you know, go ahead and, and trim them out there, whatever works for you. I like to do it up here in my room because I most of the time have my iPad going with either a YouTube video or um, something on Netflix or, you know, the news, whatever. I just, I never like to really go back after I've cut something because you kind of get that jaggedy look. Okay, I think that looks good. Okay, so here's your little bat. Now what you want to do is put cam snaps. So I have my cam snaps and I'm looking to see if I have a hand sanitizer. I did have one here. Oh yes, I do. I have one. So uh, Bed Bath & Beyond, these are the hand sanitizer type I like to use. I believe you could fit other kind, maybe ones you get from Dollar Store or that. Um, but they had these really cute Halloween ones online for Bed Bath & Beyond. And I was really upset because I ordered them. And one was like a red, like vampire blood. And I don't know what the other one was, some kind of green something. And then here, when they shipped my order, they said only part of your order shipped. And the two packs of those that I truly, really wanted for these, of course, <laughs> I didn't get. Okay, so there's that little circle. And I use a, a small little uh, hole punch. I'm going to come under here under the light where I can see. All right, so then you're just going to punch a hole there. Okay. And um, then what you need to do is to punch a hole down here. So let me go under the light where I can see. And if you want to, you know, go ahead and, and mark that. I'm going to have a little chalk marker maybe. How about that? Maybe that'll work. Okay, so I'm going to... Oh, dear. That's what I'm telling you. I just like klutzy, klutzy. So um, if I want to put this, say, right there. Oh, that even come through. Put like a little dot there. Then I'll know where to uh, punch the hole. But give yourself some room there. Maybe a little further down from that. I'm going to go a little bit off camera here. Okay, so then you'll punch a hole there. Okay, so I have my cam snaps. I got a ton of them in here. Doesn't matter what color you use. Um, just going to need, uh, let's see, let's do a green one. So I'm going to need two that have the pokies, the pokey part. Two pokies. Let me put you down a little bit. Two pokies. And then you need one that's like a female and one that's a male. And I just threw all of them in here. Just, you know, I can dig through them. So I need one that has like an innie. And then you need one that has like an outie. There we go. So before you go and do them, make sure you have them all. Because there's certain colors like red and black. I tend to use a lot. Now it doesn't, doesn't really matter which one you put where. But on the front, you're going to put the nice looking one and turn it over and then I'm going to put the any on there and um, you have this little cam snap tool if you've never used this before this just kind of the black part is going to be on the nice side and then this little white part is going to fit right in there and you're going to squeeze okay so there's your cam snap and then for this one you're going to put the nice part on the inside so that the pokey part, let me go under the light where I can see. Okay, so the pokey part will come through and then you want the outie part. <laughs> Those are all technical terms to go there. So then when it goes like this, it'll snap, okay? So let me, now you can go ahead and do this piece and put your cam snap in before you even stitch it. 
but you have to make sure you have it centered and blah, blah, blah. So I don't know if I take the easy way or the hard way. And then it'll snap like that. So you could put a little key ring holder on there for them. And when you open it, you take your little hand sanitizer and here's the test. You're gonna slip it in there. And uh, let's see, I think it goes better the other way. We put it this way, because how's it gonna open? It's gonna open this way. So it opens that way, yeah, that'll work. And close that up. Then you could put a little key ring on there or you can hook it on somewhere. And here's the back. And there's the bottom where it opens up. And I think it's just super cute. So I hope that this uh, is fulfilling your need to see a video from me that is an embroidery video. Let me bring them up real close so you can see. Isn't it cute? And super easy to do. Check out all the other designs that Little Bee has. Um, she's not sponsoring me in it by any way. She's not paying me to do this. This is just something fun I found. And it's for, you know, I'm thinking Halloween time, right? But you know, boys and bats, they kind of like those kind of things. But there's a lot of other designs on there. She has lots of things from key fobs to chapstick holders to you name it. And um, yeah, I think it's cute. So thanks so much for joining me today. I hope you liked what you saw. If you did and you're not yet a subscriber, I would love for you to subscribe. It costs absolutely zilch, zitto, nothing. And it helps me out with my channel by you subscribing, leaving comments, give me thumbs up. Be sure to share this if you have any other friends that you think would enjoy seeing this. Join me over on my Facebook page at Sweet Bee Embroidery. I'd love to see you over there. And that's my dog. And I'm surprised she hasn't barked yet. So um, again, have a great night. Be safe out there. Please pray for those affected by uh, hurricanes and floods and tornadoes and just everything that's going on in the world. Um, our, our troops, people from Afghanistan. I mean, there, there's just so many reasons to be, to be thankful and grateful for what we have here. And sometimes we just have to take a moment to really think about the things that we should be grateful for. And maybe we just take advantage of, but anyhow, that's a whole other video, right? Thanks so much for joining me. Have a great day or night, and I'll see you back here again real soon. Bye for now.